absolutely glorious day. It's, uh, it, it's, it's nice to see. I, I, I worry about saying it, but it's nice to see that spring is in full bloom. Um, this morning there were lots of deer out gleaning in the, the granny fields from last year. They seem to be swelling, so the time must be getting close that we can once again welcome, welcome new birth. I, I, uh, I had a funny thing happen in Beartville this morning, and uh, and I don't know why it was particularly funny, but it struck me funny, and, and I'll share it with you. Carol Anderson uh, does a wonderful job, as Liz does, of, of playing the organ for us, and and. Before the service, Carol was playing on the wings of a snow white dove. And, and as I was preparing for the service, I immediately had a flashback to Dick Stacy's Country Jamboree. <laughs> and, and Jenny with her guitar playing on the wings of a snow white dove. <laughs> and, and so when I walked out after my preparation for the service, I was still kind of chuckling a little bit. <laughs> You know, I don't know if this is the right place for me to have these memories uh, of Dick Stacy's Country Jamboree, but here we are in church once again. Uh, it made me laugh, and, and right now it seems that anything that can make me laugh is a, is a welcome thing. So, so that, was, that was wonderful. Uh, this is the fourth Sunday in Easter already. Uh, and as I said uh, earlier this morning, it seems as if I've been delaying saying the S word long enough that now we're almost into summer. And, you know, the crops are in the ground or, or being put in the ground. And uh, it won't be any more than a couple of sleeps until harvest is here once again. So um, time flies by. Uh, our celebration this morning of Holy Eucharist on this fourth Sunday at Easter it begins on page 185 of the Book of Alternative Services. Scripture says, I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own, and my own know me. We begin our service. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace, and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, God, heavenly King, almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, you, we give you thanks, we praise, praise you for your glory. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, only Son of the Father, Father Lord God, God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have, have mercy on us. We are seated at the right, right hand of the Father, we receive our prayer. For you, you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Liz, we talked about this before church, and then I did it. Uh, we forgot the opening hymn. Isn't there down there? Well, we still had it. And Nadine pointed out that I, I could forget it, and... And there I am. So our first hymn, our opening hymn, is hymn number 547 in, in the blue hymn. 547, The Lord is My Shepherd.
I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in the green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. And gives me along the right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, you comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will and I dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Together, glory, glory to you, you Jesus, Jesus, our, our good shepherd. shepherd. In the, in the waters, waters of baptism, you give us new birth. At your table, you nourish us with heavenly food. And in your goodness and mercy, you guide us beyond the terrors of evil and death to your Father's home to dwell in eternal life. Glory to you forever. The second reading is 
from Revelation 7, 9 to 17. The reading from the book of Revelation to John. After this, I looked and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within the temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will not perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given to me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. saying for weeks that spring 
is a time of rebirth. We've been saying that it's a time for new growth, a time for joyous celebration in the resurrection of our Lord's of our Lord Jesus Christ. And yet it seems that for one reason or another, winter seems to have held on like a bad smell. I was told this week by a completely unreliable source that this is all because the Toronto Maple Leafs have made it into postseason play. And that it will come to an abrupt halt and summer will be here within the next few days as they once again join those who are playing golf. A metamorphosis of sorts from a group of hockey players to a group of foursome, foursomes on the golf course. As I said before, anything that allows us to be lighthearted in times of darkness needs to be embraced. Metamorphosis is, is something, this change is something that we learn at an early age. It's something that we all enjoy in our youth and in our adulthood. We see pictures of caterpillars turning into butterflies, cutworms turning into June bugs, tadpoles turning into frogs and toads, and eggs germinating into chicks. Any fisherman in the upper valley can tell you that if the mayflies are out, then the fish are biting. This is a signal that the flies are morphing from their larva stage to their fly stage and they're still floating on the water in their very vulnerable state. A great time to dig out your rod and reel and try your hand at fly fishing. All of these natural transformations are beautiful things for us to witness. And each one of them reinforces the idea that we have in our minds that each and every day of our lives, God's hand is at work. The songs that we hear after a spring shower of the birds as they sit on their nests, the butterflies and moths as they enter our gardens to enjoy the tulips and the crocuses and the dandelions as they grow on our lawns. The tadpoles changing into small swimming things in shallow receding ponds of water. It seems as if there's no end for this metamorphic change that takes place each spring. Our human nature tells us that there's no end of scientific reasons for all of these things to take place. And yet as Christians, there's something so warming, so filling about the idea of just accepting them as miracles, gifts of creation from our Heavenly Father. In our house, we found out a number of years ago when our new pup entered our lives how Humans are not the only ones who enjoy these springtime metamorphoses. Our pup, who within the first few nights of being in our house, decided at bedtime she would run to the door and wait. We thought, wow, are we ever lucky to have a dog so smart that just after only a few days is house trained? And every night wants to go outside before she goes to bed. It didn't take us long to realize that what she really wanted was to walk through the dewy grass and catch the June bugs in her teeth as they popped up out of the grass. Not knowing what to do with them, she spit them out, but it was quite a sport. It became very frustrating for us because it seems as if she was more enamored with the idea of hunting
hunting June bugs in the long grass than she was actually going outside for the purpose that we were out there at that time of day. As the cutworm breaks from the cocoon that it spends the winter in, the ground opens up and it pops out. It, its wings just barely dry. The June bug emerges and begins to fly and terrorize young people on window screenings and screen doors, getting stuck in their hair as they walk under the street lights or down a country road. It took a three-month-old pup to remind me that the wonders of springtime transition, transformation, are for all creation to enjoy, for all creation to witness the wonder of God's hand. Everything about his design is pure perfection. This simple worm, this grub that destroys our gardens and eats the roots off our grass, spends a season loosening the soils, aerating and ventilating our lawns and our gardens for one single purpose, so that at the end of its sleep as it emerges, the ground is soft and porous so that it can pop up and through and begin its life cycle once again. This is a great thing for us to witness as part of creation, creation taking place all around us. As we look back in the scriptures, this type of metamorphosis, this transition, this transfiguration, begins in the very first moments that Jesus is mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. He is the Lamb of God, perfect, unblemished, without sin, a divine creation, the Son of God. And yet every moment he was present on earth, he changed. He spent time with his friends. He spent time with his family. He spent time with the people who he loved. He spread the news of his father. Not just to large crowds on mountainsides, but to intimate gatherings. One-on-one -on -one conversations. Each time he opened his mouth, he spoke with purpose. He spoke with intent. He spoke of love and compassion. He nurtured his disciples and spent his entire life preparing them for a single moment. The moment that a few weeks ago we remembered. His final journey to the top of Calvary. As modern Christians, we are able to witness all of this from a distance. We don't have to worry about being stoned for admitting that we're Christians. We don't have to worry about being crucified for speaking out how we feel. We are witnesses of the torture we're witnesses of the pain. We're witnesses of his transformation. We are witnesses of his transition from a living, breathing God to the person, the one thing, the entity, entity that overcame death that overcame the grave, that rose from the dead. 
and is now seated at the right hand of his Father. In today's gospel, we don't celebrate what has taken place over the last few weeks. We don't celebrate God raising, Jesus raising from the dead. We step backwards. Now that we know the story, we know the end result, we step back into the foreshadowing of Jesus. Surrounded on a day of celebration by the people who came, that he came to earth to save. He says, the works that I do in my Father testify to me, but you do not believe. Because you do not belong to my sheep. Jesus died for our sins. He laid down his life for each and every one of us. We are the sheep of his flock. He says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. We can try and decipher this. We can go over these words time and time again. This is a foreshadowing. It's Jesus telling them what they need to know. And all they have to do is accept it. Not look for the answers, but accept it for what it is. Like the miracles that take place in front of our very eyes each spring. It can be looked at from different perspectives. We can put different spins on it and say, well, he really didn't want them to follow him anyways. But he did. He gave them all the direction they needed. This was all part of our Heavenly Father's design. Just like the June bug popping up out of the long spring grass or the mayflies hatching on the water's edge. As witnesses of this, as stewards of God's creation, we are once again woven into his story and he into ours. Not because of who we are or what we do, but because of the part that we play in God's creation. Witnesses, children of his own design, miracles of his own hand. It was and is his will to bring all who are true believers into one fold so that we may all live by the shepherd's power, the shepherd's protection, warmed and welcomed by the eternal love and our place in his heavenly kingdom. As we are witnesses, as we each change in his presence, as we each become what we are destined to become, let us give thanks for everything he has given us. Let us give thanks for his presence. Let us give thanks for his plan. Let us pray. Lord in heaven, you were the lamb that was led before the wolves. You were the lamb who laid down your life. You were the lamb that took away our sin and opened the doors to the kingdom of heaven. We praise your name, Lord. We give you thanks for all that we are. You are our shepherd, our guardian, and we are all the sheep of your fold under the protection of your hand. We give praise and glory in your name. Amen.
continues on page 189. Let us stand as we confess the faith of our baptism in the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge both the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we recall the events of this past week, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your presence, we praise you and glorify your name. Lord, we pray for Queen Elizabeth in her sickness. We pray for all the governments of the world as they work to ratify the problems taking place in Europe. We pray for those who are on the front line defending us, Lord. We pray for those who have lost their lives in battle and in aggression. We pray for the families they have left behind and mourn. We pray for those who have become refugees and been scattered throughout your creation. That you may be present in their lives, bringing them peace and comfort and strength as they begin their lives anew. Lord, we pray for those people in our community who suffer in sickness mind, body, and spirit. We pray that by your grace, the Holy Spirit may be present with them, bringing them comfort and hope and warmth and love so that they may heal and find peace. We pray for those who are known to us alone. That through you and in you and with you, they may find glory at the end of their journey. We ask this all in your name. Amen. <clears throat> Continuing with our service, we turn to page 191. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Together we say, Most merciful God, God, God confess that we have sinned against, sin against you in thought, word, and deed. And what we have, have done, done and what we have not done, done, done. We have, have not loved, loved you with our whole heart. heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Con confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <clears throat> Our offer 
repertory hymn is hymn number 698. 698. <clears throat> Thank 
Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is alive. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for the coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body, one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now turning to page 211. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So the breaking of the bread when you send is number 8, found on page 213. Lord, we died with you on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We are buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God.
please stand for the prayer of communion and the doxology. God of steadfast love, watch over the church redeemed by the blood of your Son. May we who share these holy mysteries come safely to your eternal kingdom, where there is one flock and one shepherd. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the living Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Whose power, power working, working in us can be infinitely more than we can ask, ask or imagine. Glory, Glory to God from generation to generation, to generation the in the church in Christ, Christ Jesus, forever, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he comfort you in times of sorrow and bring joy and happiness back to your life. As we leave here today, let us remember his love for us. And be thankful. Amen. Amen. Our recessional hymn is hymn number 539 The King of Love, My Shepherd Is.